Hey nerds, Camille here, one third of Pretty Brown and Nerdy, and today I have a little Netflix rewind for you. So I recently watched the Full Metal Alchemist movie and this movie called Mute. Now let's, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so let's get into the Full Metal Alchemist movie. Um... Okay, so I was super hyped for the movie. I thought it was going to be really good. I was really excited a couple months ago. Um, we saw like pictures and clips and things like that of the movie and I was just like, listen, it has a really good look to it. I have a whole lot of faith in it and it let me down, okay? I'm honestly just going to get my rating out of the way right now. I'm going to give it a one out of five stars. That sounds harsh, but that's just how I felt about it. The one is just for the visuals and I'm not talking about the visual effects but like the costume design and such. It looked like Full Metal Alchemist. Did it deliver? In short, I'm just gonna say no. The entire movie relied on the fact that you already know what's going on because you watched the show and so there was no real, they didn't really hit the emotionality of the really big scenes in the movie and that's what really bothered me. Like it just had the bones but didn't have any of the meat, any of the substance, and that was what was unfortunate about the movie. The movie had the right look and feel for the most part. Everyone did look like their characters with the exception of Winry. She could have just been anybody and that would have been fine. Like, I didn't feel like she was Winry, but whatever. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about the homunculi. Envy, lust, and gluttony. Gluttony looked hilarious, like nothing about Gluttony actually looked like a thing, like a real thing. And I guess it kind of played into the whole cartoony aspect. And yes, this is a anime movie, but Gluttony just looked bad to me. There's one scene in particular where, if you know how Gluttony works, his body opens up and becomes teeth and he literally opens up his body to the teeth and runs after some state alchemists and it just, it looked funny. I just, it la I laughed. It took me out of the movie. Thank God it was at the end of the movie. What the movie really did do was make me want to rewatch re the series. And before you ask, let me give you a rating or ranking of Full Metal Alchemist for you. So there's the manga, 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10, amazing, perfect, wonderful, awe-inspiring, just great. One of my favorite series of all time. Then... There's Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, 8.5 out of 10, 9 out of, I'll, you know what, I'm gonna go with 9 out of 10. That series was my shit. Brotherhood changed my life. Full Metal Alchemist, what introduced me to the entire thing was the show. I watched the show before I read the manga. 6, 6 out of 10. That That's my ranking of this. And then, and then there's the Full Metal Alchemist movie and it's, all the way at the yeah it's all the way at the bottom with a one out of five so I guess that would be like a two out of ten the movie it really was just a lackluster adaptation of the show and that's unfortunate because all of us fans who were really looking forward to the movie especially a couple of months ago when those trailers came out we were pretty much all on board and then they kind of dropped the ball and I know Netflix or whoever produced the movie and put it onto Netflix don't really care about that as long as it gets the numbers so they can make another one because they did kind of leave us some leeway to segue into another film, which I don't want it. No thanks. It really sucks as anime fans that we are time and time again disappointed by the live action adaptations of the series turned into more movie form like think about the attack on titan movie if you want to laugh if you want a joke no no it's not a joke but if you want to watch that i don't advise because it was that bad so we'll talk about a few characters ed his actor unfortunately unfortunately because he looked good in my opinion he wasn't a great ed his child version was an atrocious actor i did not believe any of the scenes at the beginning between him and Al at all. I didn't feel like he was mourning. I felt like the kid that played Al did a little bit of a better job than Ed did, but ugh, ugh, no, not great. Did he feel like 
Ed at all. I mean, like I said, he had the look, but did he have any of the substance, which is the theme of this entire review of this movie, was nobody had the the next layer behind the exterior, which is which is truly unfortunate. But I think what he was missing was kind of the wit. Like he had a little bit of the spunk, but he didn't have Al's he didn't have Ed's wit, which is really what drove the entire series, was because Ed was so smart. One step ahead of everyone else, that's how he was able to figure out things and how him and his brother were able to succeed in all of the things that they did in the series. And this Ed just wasn't cutting it. Al looked amazing, was cute. You could call a giant suit of armor, sentient suit of armor cute. I thought he was cute, okay? He was adorable. Mustang looked great I think and his voice I felt like did command attention and I thought that he may have been okay for the movie. Riza, great. I loved her. Perfect beautiful angel baby. Hughes looked the part. We didn't really get much interaction as far as well we did get some interaction with Hughes and the boys but not that much and I get that it's a movie and so we don't have that much time to develop the story or I guess personal interactions between people that happened over a span of episodes instead of crammed into an hour and actually it was two hours the runtime was two hours and I was surprised by that I was like hmm they might actually tell a story in this and then they didn't they didn't so Hughes his spoiler's death was still pulled at my heartstrings, but not as much as it should have because the movie was not good, guys. And let's talk a little about Show Tucker and Nina, that whole situation. Um, I'm gonna just say it like that chimera looked hilarious to me and maybe because I was just all the way out of the movie in general, but like... What I heard is that they waited on the CG technology to advance before they made the movie. And so I was like, cool, they're really going to go for it. But then he looked like a Muppet with some hair. And I was just like, why? Why? I know this is a little bit disjointed, but my thoughts are everywhere because this movie was so bad. Ah. Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh because I do think that a lot of people did enjoy it because their minds could fill in the gaps of what happened, but did it have any more than that? No. Lust was hot. I'll give them that. She was, she was nice to look at. But uh, yeah, that was my scrambled review of that. So skirt, moving on. So my next movie review is the movie Mute starring Alexander Skarsgård, beautiful Eric from True Blood. It also had some really notable cool actors like Florence Kasumba, aka Ayo from Black Panther, Dominic Monaghan from Lord of the Rings, just a bunch of, I think Sam Rockwell was somewhere in the background, but that we'll, we'll get to why Sam Rockwell was in this later. There was just a bunch of cool actors and I'm sure I missed people, but yes, mute. Was it good? Okay, I'm gonna preface this with the rating that I'm giving Mute before I tell you anything else was a two out of five. Sorry. It would have been maybe a little bit better if there wasn't a pedophile in the movie and the looming danger of him attacking a child was like holding all of my emotions hostage the entire movie and I couldn't fully enjoy most of the scenes because I was worried that he was going to harm a child. So there's that. So if you don't want to watch a movie that has pedophilia in it, this ain't for you, okay? The movie was produced by Duncan Jones who is Bowie's son and he did the movie Moon, the movie Warcraft, um, a couple of other movies that you might recognize but Moon is in the same universe as this movie and that's why Sam Rockwell did a little cameo in the background of this movie. So Mute, the premise of the movie is that it's a science fiction movie set in the future in Berlin and the main character Alexander Skarsgård's name is Leo and he is a mute person who meets a sex worker named Nadira who he falls in love with but she goes missing and the entire movie you don't really get to know Nadira except for through flashbacks and little clips of her life 
in the movie and Leo is chasing after her because he loved her and he wanted to get her back. That is the premise of the movie. Sounds okay, right? I guess. Anyway, the movie was frustrating. Okay, maybe I'm just craving science fiction universes, fantastical universes, and so that's why I watch these movies, but I had a feeling it was gonna be bad and it didn't disappoint. Like, I knew it was going to be bad and it was bad. It was cool to see, like, hover cars and a really cool, like, neon hellscape. Not really a hellscape, but Blade Runner-esque type world. And I was just like, okay, I will watch this, but was it good? No. Alexander Skarsgård, he was mute because of a childhood injury. He was also Amish, and so in this universe, he could have gotten his vocal cords fixed from the injury, but he didn't because he's holding on to his, like, religious background, and so therefore he doesn't really interact that much with that kind of technology. But uh, he's a bartender in a club, and that's how he meets Nadira. She goes missing, blah, blah, blah. We're chasing after her the whole time, and what's frustrating is that it would have been cool if him being mute really played into the plot somehow, but it was just frustrating that he was not able to verbalize what was going on with him and what was going on the, in the background didn't really affect him being mute, if that makes sense. So uh, he's mute, he's a giant guy, he beats up a lot of people. Cool, right? It was just weird and creepy the only character that was kind of interesting was Paul Rudd's character and that's why I was kind of watching the movie because Paul Rudd was in it. His name was Cactus Bill and he is like an underground ex-military doctor and he does weird shady back deal surgeries for gangsters. Cool, right? Yeah. He's got a lot of charisma. He's a little bit crazy. Sometimes he just like swings out his knife and attacks people and sometimes he's great. He's got a kid. Guess what? The kid is always in danger from his best friend who, for whatever reason, he still hung around because military buddies or whatever, but he's a f***ing pedophile and we just let this happen throughout the movie. I'm sorry, that's what distracted me from the entire movie was that there was a pedophile in the movie and it was disgusting and gross. Yeah, we didn't really, there was no payoff in the end. Alexander Skarsgård's character Leo did get the bad guys, I guess, so just know, spoilers, the pedophile dies. Great. I'm so happy. Other than that, nothing else in the movie had any high stakes for me. I mean, the stakes were high, but did it matter? Not really. <sighs> Would I say it was worth watching? I mean, if you want to throw this on in the background and kind of look up sometimes and see a cool scene, yes, watch this movie. But other than that, no. I think the pedophilia and the unnecessary Violence against women is what really, really, really disturbed me about the film. So, cool. Nadir is a sex worker. She falls in love. Leo loves her despite, who cares, sex workers can be loved. That she is, you know, a prostitute. Cool. But all of the sex work characters in the background seemed like, yes, they had their agency and free will and whatever, but they also seemed to be in danger because of the underground environment that they were working in. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was a lot. It was a whole lot. I thought the movie was going to be progressive and say some things about society, but it said nothing. It did nothing for me. It was just, it was just not good. Why I give it a two out of five was the, the action scenes were kind of cool and the background in which all of this was happening was cool because like I said I crave these fantastical science fiction-y weird universes where there's flying cars and like girls with shaven heads and glitter on their chest. Florence Kasumba looked amazing. I, I just I want to point that out. She had like glitter, gold titties, bald head, super tall, amazing. Other than that um, there's a lot that I need to watch next. Hopefully Altered Carbon pretty soon here. I know I'm a little bit behind, but whatever, I have a life. Yeah, what are you watching on Netflix? What are some things that are slept on? What are some shows that are slept on? Because there's so many Netflix shows and movies, 
and there's more and more every like two, three, four weeks and I'm just like, what the heck Netflix? You're let me know what I should be watching. I have a backlog of shows and there's also things on, on Hulu. <sighs> oh, I have so much to watch. <laughs> anyway, until next time y'all, make sure you like, subscribe, share, comment, do all of that. Don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I made myself laugh. I don't I don't know why. If you're not already, follow us on all social media. Also, make sure you're listening to the podcast. It's getting good, y'all. Like, we're three episodes in and I'm just like, we are professional podcasters. Who's going to pick us up? When are we joining a network? Who's paying us for this shit? Because we're amazing. I'm kidding, but only kind of. Anyway, bye y'all.